Hello everyone, welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I know it's been a few days. My girlfriend and I have been on vacation in California. We've been enjoying it a lot. And I wanna make this video to tell you, all of you going on EV road trips, adventuring a little bit with your electric car, whatever it may be, that you need one accessory really badly because it might just save you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So a lot of cars come with this, some don't. If yours doesn't, we'll talk about the most popular models in this video. Well, you need to get one. They're a couple hundred bucks. These accessories could really save your butt. What I'm talking about is one of these a mobile connector. What is this thing? What does it do? And why do you need one? Well, keep watching and we'll find out. So a lot of you hopefully have mobile connectors at home, sorry, standard connectors. And what I'm talking about is basically something to charge your electric car, something like this. Very conveniently enough, the house that Gosha and I have been staying in has one of these. And these are pretty nice. Uh, you can get these units pretty affordably. You can get them hardwired and set up in your home. Um, or you can have them plug into what's called a NEMA 1450 socket. It's just a special type of wall socket used for appliances like dryers and washing machines. This one, I believe, appears to be hardwired. Um, or maybe it's actually plugged into a socket there. Nope, it's a NEMA 1450. So uh, these are great. And the benefit of having a 1450 connected one, like you can see here with a special connection, is that you can use a mobile connector as well. And on a trip, you know, you might be going to hotels and campsites and all kinds of things in an electric car. And these don't need to be stops that are uh, wasting your time. In fact, these are spots that you can charge at overnight and in charging deserts or deserts literally, these can actually be super extremely helpful. So, right, we're plugging in with what's called level two for EV charging, these kinds of connectors. Well, you can take this on the road with you. Now you could honestly just take a unit like this, but lots of companies design specific connectors that are meant to be more mobile. They don't have screws that attach the walls. They're meant to live in the trunk of your car, or if your car has a big enough front trunk, live in your front. So what I'm talking about with the mobile connector situation is this. I have mine in the back of the Polestar 2 here, and it's the official kind of Volvo supply unit. Uh, they brand it Polestar, but Volvo and Polestar use the same one. I think they just put a different sticker on it because the companies are very closely related. And this unit is really helpful. You can see here, I have it configured with a NEMA 1450, 240 volt. So if I were to pull up to an RV campsite like Gosha and I did a few days ago, then I could actually plug in to their 50 amp socket and charge my car to 100%. We really needed this when we were in Death Valley, California, because, well, Death Valley, there wasn't a lot of charging infrastructure. And to honestly get to where we were going the next day, we needed to start with a pretty high charge. This was one way to do that. We planned ahead and brought this. Luckily, this model came with my vehicle, and I love this one because it has a swappable connector here. So you've got NEMA 1450, but you also have, for real emergencies, hope you don't need it, but a wall connector. This is, I believe, is called a NEMA um 615 or 415 but basically 15 amp wall connector you're used to seeing these it's what you use to plug in your phone bricks laptops whatever uh, normal appliances at home that don't need as much power this will trickle charge your car so with something like the nemo 1450 we're talking about uh for most of these connectors overnight with this we're talking about getting like 15 to 20 percent overnight depends of course on your vehicle's battery one more thing to consider is the amp specification so the one that came with my vehicle is pretty good it's 40 amps which is the maximum acceptable load you want continuously on an ema 1450. Um, so if you can get 40 amp hardware that's great when you look on amazon places they should be rated cheaper ones will be 32 amps or 30 amps that's still okay for overnight you may not get quite a full charge depending on the battery size of your car but if you have like a base tesla model 3 or base ionic 6 vehicles like this then you'll probably still get a very appreciable charge uh, so my Polestar comes with one. I believe the Ford Mustang Mach-E comes with one. Chevy Bolt, for as long as those are still on sale. Really nice that they include it. Tesla has stopped including their mobile connector in recent years because Tesla likes to, well, make their cars as cheap as possible, remove as many things as possible. Luckily, they sell a pretty great kit on their website for a little over $200. You can get that has both level one, right, the wall socket, and level two, 240 volt connectors. I really love that. Um, so I would recommend getting that. So that's kind of basically my PSA in this video is you really need to, I think, invest in a mobile connector if your car doesn't have one and just always keep it around. Now, some people like to get these mobile connectors and to save cost, use it in their house. You know, instead of getting one of those units over there, they'll just use the mobile connector. Nothing stopping you from that. That's fine. I personally like the peace of mind of always having mine in my vehicle wherever I go at any time I've got one, as well as I've got my dedicated wall box at home. Even though they're fairly similar, the mobile connector usually provides fewer amps, especially, you know, if you're 
wall connector is hardwired, the mobile connector is working over a socket. It's still fine for overnight for most folks, and it's a game changer. Gosha and I also used this when we were camping in the San Juan National Forest. We had a tent site, it was super useful. Uh, another thing I should mention, hotels and campsites, you can fig uh, configure on like TripAdvisor, Airbnb, Booking.com. I've noticed all these sites have a filter under amenities for EV charging. So when you select that filter, sometimes they have chargers already. They're already, make sure they're compatible with your vehicle because Tesla and uh, every other electric vehicle uses a different connection. Most electric vehicles that aren't Tesla, actually basically every single one in the US uses this connector. Teslas use a different one. Uh, one more nerdy note, these are not chargers technically. These are what are called electric vehicle supply equipment. The charger is actually built into your car. So if your car is like a base Tesla Model 3, it actually doesn't have a 48 amp charger. I think it just has a 40 amp or something, maybe even a 32 amp, meaning you don't need to get an overspec wall connector or a mobile connector if your car has a lower level built-in charger. In every modern electric car, the actual charging component that converts the AC power from the wall to DC, that's in the car. That's why these guys are so great, so cheap and compact. All they really have to do is just deliver that power to the car. The onboard charger in the car does the translation to put that direct current into the battery. Super helpful. But in this video, I don't just want to talk about what you need. That's the important part, but let's also talk about logistics. So I'm going to uh, flip the camera around and Gosha can talk a little bit here if she wants to. But Gosha, what was our situation like in Death Valley? <sighs> So, um, when you look up online, if you can charge EV cars at RV sites, there's a lot of blogs and people who've experienced lots of camping who said, yeah, it's completely fine. And we pull up to um, this RV spot that I booked that was very much on the way so we wouldn't have to really get off of our track um, on our way out here to, to California. And we pull up and one of um, the owners or employee or manager was saying, no, you cannot use our RV spot. They would not want anyone to park there with their car. Um, if they had an RV, that'd be fine. I had a truck with a camper set up, that'd be fine. Um, and they would not budge on their uh, decision to not let us park there and charge our car overnight, even though we generously offered to also pay for a campsite because we did have a tent and all that. Um, so that was a really stressful situation and Something you should really, I really re recommend you do is call ahead to make sure an RV spot is okay with you using um, it as a place for you to charge your EV as well as um, camp at it. Because um, in that moment, um, we had to make a decision of are we going to have to chain, stay there at the hotel, at the motel there, or I was able to have enough, just enough service and enough phone battery to um, call another site like 10 minutes out that was completely fine mm -hmm. with us camping there. And I think accommodation wise was a lot better and it was a really wonderful experience um, because the staff was so, so wonderful there. Yeah. Yeah. The social angle is important. Sometimes people just aren't used to cars, you know, plugging into sockets. Maybe they thought we were car camping or something, or maybe they just wanted to upsell us into a hotel room. <laughs> Who knows? They mentioned having Tesla chargers. One thing I wanted to mention, Gosha, people can actually buy a Tesla adapter, not for fast charging yet, but for the slower charging uh, for okay. those Tesla connectors that mm -hmm. hotels often provide. Sometimes they only have the Tesla brand one and not the generic J1772. You can just get an adapter for your um, car. I don't have one, but it's nice sometimes if you know you're staying somewhere that only has Tesla charging, mm -hmm. a handy thing you can get. Tesla includes actually the other way around, the connector that goes from the Tesla connector to J1772 because they know it's so common. Frankly, because it's non-Tesla, this is the more common connector. But now and then you will come across sites where there's only the Tesla one for those lower night level two charges. But overall, what did you think of just the, um, I don't know, the peace of mind of having something like this? Oh gosh, um, that was really, really helpful. Yeah, because we'll come to a lot of these towns and especially if you're like camping, like going out to rural areas, you can't be surprised that there's some of that EV infrastructure isn't there. So um, it was really nice to plug in in the San Juans and just be all ready to go and not have to worry about finding um, uh, uh, some other charging station on our way. And when we were in the in the desert, and that's I feel like was our best option um, mm -hmm. to charge. Since we had to stop, we wanted to stop overnight anyway. Um, there's some slower chargers in the area that probably could have worked, but it would definitely gave us a lot more peace of mind and less um, r stress about getting to our next uh, charging location. 
gives you peace of mind. I think it makes you understand that, frankly, mm -hmm. for this level two, as we discussed, right, AC infrastructure, it's really not complicated. It's pretty easy for businesses to install like a Clipper Creek branded or other companies make them unit that just provides customers or guests or whomever it may be with charge. But if they don't have that, right, people can go on PlugShare, they can select NEMA 1450, make sure it has those um, outlets and plug in, provided, of course, they call ahead, make sure that place is okay <laughs> yes. with it, as we learned. Uh, because yes, call ahead, please. Even if it's, you know, logistically, technically possible, sometimes they just, they've got yeah. weird rules. And hopefully that changes over time as electric vehicles are more and more normal. But for now, seems like it's good to be prepared on both ends of things, with the hardware in your car and the knowledge of your itinerary to be able to call ahead. Um, that way as well so yeah that's been cool but uh we'll have another video gusha later where we'll talk about all the road trip it sounds like i learned a bit you learned a lot too <laughs> yes i uh, learned so a lot for sure a lot of fun things on this you know road trip adventure we had in my electric car um so that was cool but um yeah we'll see everyone in the next video thanks for joining me